Welcome. This is the operational case study strategic analysis for the May 2015 exam. This is the first of eight videos for Astrante and we're looking at the Batten bicycles. My name's Sandy Hood. I'm going to try and help you through this. I've got a background in financial control within many different firms, quite a lot of which are medium-sized. So I think that that's going to be quite useful in the context of Batten Bicycles. And I've also had many years teaching accountancy, uh, both at uh, Carl Shorten College and then later on at Chichester College, and now as an independent tutor. I'm going to assume that you haven't read the case study yet, so that we're taking it as if we were looking at it for the first time. I think that this is useful. I think it's going to help us to identify areas within the P1, E1 and F1 syllabuses where the Batten Bicycles has got issues or opportunities for us to apply the models that we've encountered already within our study. The, the contents here shows all the pages within the pre-seen material. On the day of the exam, you will have some unseen material which we won't have seen by then. But certainly we've got an opportunity to try and anticipate what could be tested in the unseen material um, by taking a step-by-step -step approach and going through what the pre-scene is showing us. Here you can see several pages, adds up to a total of 21, and we're going to look at the, the first couple of pages within the general information section for Batten Bicycles. This, this, will, this will give us a bit of a background about the business. Sure, in the second and the, the third of these videos, then I'll start to go through the, the later pages. And, and then having completed the case and the pre-seen material, we'll then look at a specific uh, video looking at the application of E1, within Batten, looking at the application of P1, looking at the application of F1. Then we'll do a, a an overall strategic analysis and finally come up with some 10 key areas that I think are likely to be examined uh, within the, the unseen case exam in, in May. Right, we're now looking at the first of the pages of the information that's been provided for us. And we're going to see a little bit of the background of Batten Bicycles, certainly within, within this first page of, of narrative. Right, we've got the first paragraph. Not an awful lot for us to, to think about at this stage, but certainly th this is a 100-year-old company, and it was set up by a sing single individual, as many were at that time, and with a great deal of enthusiasm for metalworking and similar sorts of aspects. In the second paragraph, we can see that the products have changed over the years, which is interesting. It would be quite unusual, really, for a, a firm that was around 100 years ago to still be selling the same products. This looks as if it's a, a, a company that's interested in high engineering standard. So we can see from here that there's going to be uh, a small number of points that we can already start to make. The first of these points is that this is going to be a quality product. And as a quality product, we're looking at the letter P within the marketing mix. So marketing mix as you may well recall from E1 made up of product, price, place and promotion and sure you may well recall the other ones that were more related to service products but certainly for a manufactured product these are the four main P's and quality bicycles would be P for product and in this case if we've got a high quality product, we would be expecting it to be something that they can sell for a high price compared with their competitors. And 
this next sentence highlights another aspect which is also associated with that is that they have a prestigious reputation and when you think of a prestigious reputation then that should be thinking in terms of bicycles that they are reliable bicycles and it gives me a second reason to think that they may well be of a higher price so we've got two reasons for them to charge higher prices already because they've been going and it's always been in the same hands then we will see plenty of continuity and a rather traditional approach we would imagine this this could be a good thing because it might mean that they know exactly where they stand but it may mean that they've been unwilling to change over the over the years we'll need to read on we can see that Jim has recently taken over and as such there may well be an opportunity for change but we can also see that he's been working within the firm for 25 years already and if he was going to make a change then perhaps he would have made something already moving on to the next paragraph we can see that the business is in the same place that it started a hundred years ago and as such it may not be laid out in the most efficient way it could be that there's been bits tagged on from time to time to time and they could be producing part of a bicycle and then having to drag it over to another area for it to be finished off so we could well be looking at quite an inefficient manufacturing process this would open up the opportunity for the examiner to in investigate certain areas of E1 and P1 within P1 we could be looking at the inefficiencies adding to the costs of manufacturing but not adding to the finished products value so in other words not enabling the company to charge any more simply because they've got a rather inefficient process within E1 you will have looked at the layout and flow so we may well be looking at this in, in the context of Batman's bicycles which is which is quite exciting and certainly there may well be opportunities to even consider cellular production uh, perhaps as we as we read on but at certainly this stage it looks inefficient it looks as if bicycles are being made part by part by part and shifted from one place to another in order that it can fit in with where there is sufficient space so I think we've identified within this paragraph alone that the inefficient layout is going to give us opportunities or certainly the examiner opportunities to test us on our understanding of the addition of cost but not value within P1 and the idea of layout and flow within E1 we also have a factory that's near to the limit of its capacity I think that that would indicate to me that there may well be thoughts looking into the future that could say well if it's near to its uh, capacity at the moment and perhaps if the business is looking to grow with this rather new uh, person in charge then they may well be looking for a completely new location where they can lay things out more in a more organized sort of a way and also where they could increase their capacity and certainly within your studies of uh, the location of businesses you'll be well aware that uh, businesses that are adding a lot of value and able to then sell on to customers then will tr probably try and locate close to their markets whereas other businesses where they are uh, getting rid of waste and not wanting to transport a lot of waste to the uh, point where the, the customers actually buy the end product would tend to be located near to the source so in this case we may well be looking at uh, a factory that doesn't necessarily have to be very very close to the end, end customers unless 
we're going to be looking at something where we want to actually build it in, in front of them which at this stage when we've only read it, the first page you know, it doesn't look particularly likely so it looks as if we could be basing production perhaps away from where our customers are now we see that Jim who's taken over has an attitude considering that the engineering reputation of the business perhaps is something that is no longer as important as it once was and, but also within that sentence we've got the sense that he is a manager who has opinions but doesn't necessarily voice them so we may well be anxious in terms of his ability to uh, run the business as a whole uh, with, with that kind of an attitude. So two points really that crop up both within the E1 syllabus. Uh, one of them to do with um, whether the engineering reputation is, is too dominant and the other one about whether Jim has the management capability And then this second point that fits in with what we were looking at earlier, will the significance of product with engineering excellence start to change within the business? Are we looking at a, a, a man who's going to uh, basically downgrade engineering excellence because he favours other aspects of the marketing mix that could lead to more profitability. As we read on we see that the sales oriented approach is mentioned. Now the sales oriented approach is something that we will no doubt be able to remember from E1 again, so a lot of E1 here, but here we're looking at maximizing sales of products that we've already made an interesting concept for them to introduce here but it does fit in with the pr product oriented approach that they've had in the past so could we be looking at a question that is going to ask us about the different orientations that businesses can adopt so we can see that in the margin I've written sales product production and marketing here the, the company has certainly had a product oriented approach in the past make the products as good as you possibly can we really are focused on excellent technical quality and the engineering excellence is the evidence of that and that has worked for very many businesses and the, the other method of orientation is the production orientation which is focused on producing things in the most efficient way I suspect that this hasn't been something that has been a focus at bat and bicycles and the marketing approach now having a, a market oriented approach doesn't get a mention in this paragraph but within the syllabus E1 focuses on market orientation as probably the best way for a business to work because what we do with a market oriented approach is we find out what the customer wants and then go away and see whether we've got the capability to meet the customer's needs and it would come as no surprise to me to see one of the uh, questions in one of the exams asking us to look at the different orientations and to describe what has happened in the past what Jim is suggesting should happen in the future and any other orientations that we could think of and that would be quite a useful way of testing that we understand the different orientations and can put them into the context of baton bicycles so well worth going back to your E1 notes if this is a little bit hazy and revising exactly what these orientations are.
and certainly in the next section he says that he's aware of the need to widen the product range and to customize bicycles to respond to the demands of a growing number of cyclists worldwide well I said at the beginning I might change my mind and this is an example of just that that if we're looking at customized bicycles we may well need to be located close to the market so in that relocation point that we were looking at in the previous paragraph I thought that they may well be able to produce away from the market and and, and in doing so probably get lower rents whereas now if we're looking at customized bicycles we may well be wanting to have a location closer into where our customers are so that the the, the modifications that are made to the, the, the standard uh, bicycle can be done close to where the customer is based i've also highlighted the widen the product range just a, a way of recognizing again that both a market-oriented approach and a sales-oriented approach would be certainly interested in the, the number of products that the customer is able to buy. Okay, right, we now move along to an article that's appeared in Cycling News. And it doesn't uh, hurt for me just to, just, to, just to identify in here and point out to you the style in which this has been written because I think one of the things that we will be tested on within the work that we do is that we write in an appropriate style for whoever our reader is and here we've got an article that's been written for cyclists so we are looking at a quite a, a narrow uh, readership and there may well be an essence of uh, perceived existing knowledge and a style within which this article has been written right looking at this you can see that they they're talking about the increase in the popularity of cycling there isn't very much more in the first paragraph than just to say that there's been the olympic games there was a tour de france certainly in the uk and they both drew in a lot of people who were interested but there again when Wimbledon's on there's a lot of people that want to go to the park and play tennis but as soon as Wimbledon's finished they stop playing tennis the difference here is that the cycling has continued to show interest and this second paragraph perhaps helps us to see why cycling seems to have become more and more popular whereas tennis just declines as soon as the Wimbledon's finished so here it's a most efficient method of exercise so that's fair enough the people in in today's society need some exercise and bicycles are seen as a way of providing that and then we move on to an area of pest analysis you remember pest analysis the political environment that affects business the economic environment that affects business the sociological environment that affects business technical environment environmental and the legal well as we look at this we can see that there are more cycle paths in major cities and there is secure parking and storage offered by employers and many commuters are choosing to forego the car and public transport so from those we can pick out uh, aspects from pastel that this is identified with pastel changes so i've highlighted the political and the sociological here the the cycle paths are provided by local authorities part of government or under instruction from central government whichever way it is it's certainly a opportunity that's being provided for people to 
ride their bicycles and as such it becomes an opportunity for a company that's manufacturing bicycles because it makes it easier for the customer to want to buy one. If previously they had to compete on the road then it was less of an attractive proposition. Nothing in here on economic uh, aspects of the external environment but sociologically I've picked out three. The, the employers have changed their patterns. Employers are adopting a more friendly approach to storage of bicycles and instead of basically telling their staff well if you want to bicycle then you can lock your bike up wherever you like but I'm not going to help you now they're saying that's fine now that I know that you want to bicycle to work we're going to lay on storage facilities in a secure car park so that the bicycles can be locked up safely and at the end of the working day you can go back pick up your bicycle and cycle home the next one the word that, that I thought was particularly significant was the word choosing. Commuters are choosing to forego the car, choosing to forego public transport and they're getting on their bicycles. That's an example of sociological change. Whenever you're looking at sociological factors you've got to be looking at something that's changed within what's going on and the final one is the instead of using the gym so it's another thing that's it's going on that the these people who previously as part of their life would go into the gym and do their exercises and then come out of the gym perhaps get in the car and drive home again or drive on to work are now saying no no we won't go to the gym today what we're going to do instead is we're going to cycle and in doing so they do two jobs at once cycling gives them the exercise which means they don't have to go to the gym and it gets them from A to B more quickly certainly than they would do if they were driving along congested roads so Pestel getting a bit of a mention here Pestel certainly part of the E1 syllabus and something that we can look out for if we were to start thinking about the external environment and how it might impact button bicycle. Now we move on to the next paragraph and we've got more evidence of sociological change, uh, the leisure activity, the weekend cyclists, hotels offering facilities, Generally you can see from here that the aspect of cycling is becoming easier to carry out. The bicycle industry has taken note of these developments and cyclists are asking increasingly detailed technical questions. Well here we have the word technical and within our pest analysis the letter T stands for technological so this looks as if this is an additional aspect to the external environment analysis so we're dealing with discerning customers these are customers who know about bikes and they want to buy them and they want to know about what's gone into making them they are not prepared to tolerate heavy and inefficient bikes instead they want to have strong and lightweight alloys now if you think about the bicycles that Batten's been making you can't help thinking that perhaps these are the bicycles that the old postman used to use or the midwives would have used to go from place to place and they would be solid heavy bikes that would stand up to a lot of a lot of use and would probably last a long time now we've got this statement in here that the strong and lightweight alloys are the are the components and the materials that these enthusiasts are now looking for 
So we've got a segment of the market which is looking for quite a cutting edge aspect to their bicycles and they're looking for the sort of quality that would have been quite common within professional bike racing. So further aspects which would be at home within the E1 syllabus. Aspects to do with market segmentation, being able to identify the characteristics of a specific uh, group of customers and once you've done that then you can target them with your sales. So it wouldn't be a surprise to see the segmentation certainly as far as these particular customers were concerned. I think the other aspect that we would always want to look at here would be whether we could apply a, an assessment of whether it would be worthwhile for Batten to try and meet these customers' needs. Now we move on to the second article and I drew attention at the beginning of the, the cycling article to the fact that it was written for people with a enthusiastic view of bicycles. Lifestyle today sounds to me more like a sort of general magazine. It could be something that is, it is given out freely at uh, underground railway stations. It could be that it's uh, part of the supplement of a, of a Sunday newspaper. So it's written in a more um, racy jolly style and it doesn't take into consideration quite the same level of detailed knowledge that the that the previous article would have. And I make I make this something that I draw your attention to because when you're writing your answers, you need to adopt a style that is appropriate to your reader. There are different headings for the different competencies that you have to demonstrate within this exam. And one of those headings is people. And people is about communication, amongst other things. And if you communicate well, then you are writing in a format that is appropriate to your reader. So here, it starts with, never mind the gears, does it come in purple? And the, the first section is just saying about cycling continuing to, uh, to, to grow because people are keen on fitness. The second one uh, is then talking about the, the bicycle being something which is, needs to be both roadworthy and rideable. So you can see those as fairly basic requirements. If, if we were looking at this from a Hertzberg point of view, then I think we would regard those as hygiene factors. But then we go on and we see that the latest trend is for bright colours and graphics. Well, there was no mention of that in the industry-specific article. And we're now dealing with a new market segment. I've written a fashion accessory. Is this the market segment where appearance of the bicycles, well, it certainly says that, doesn't it? Appearance of the bicycles uh, is more important than the technical considerations. Well, in our previous article, the technical considerations were, were very important. So we've got a different customer, another market segment. One major bicycle retailer reports that customers are buying cycling clothes. Well, it could be, if we were to look at uh, expanding the income sources, then an additional source that may well be considered by Jim could be that they you know, look at some way of having some Batten bicycle branded clothing. The paragraph also states that some people buy two bicycles so that they can coordinate with the clothes that they're wearing. Fair enough. Um, it could crop up. After all, it is in the pre-scene. My gut feel is that perhaps the number of customers who would genuinely buy two bicycles in order to coordinate with the colours that they're wearing is probably very few. Okay. We've now come to the, the end of our first video. We've looked at the background, 
and we've looked at two newspaper articles. I think that what we've highlighted so far is that we are dealing with a company where there are plenty of opportunities for the examiner to test us on the E1 syllabus. We've, we've already looked in terms of aspects to do with operations. We've certainly considered the idea of quality. We've looked at marketing and very much at marketing and seen the different aspects there. And we've had a little bit of an idea of some costing aspects in relation to P1 and the way in which the, the products are being manufactured at the moment. I hope you found this useful and I hope that you will consider signing up with Astranti to look at the, the next seven videos that will go further, first thing and foremostly, with the pre-scene material and then with the specifics for the three different subject areas and later on uh, coming up with what I think are the areas that are most likely for the examiner to test in May. Thank you and I look forward to seeing you on video number two.